Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I'm reading today for Gemini Energy. Um, there's a few other signs just peeking their heads in here as well. So um, you may be Gemini Sun, you may have Gemini in other places in your chart and if I talk about another sign just know that it could just be one of your own placements if you want to go and check out your full birth chart. There's a link in the description box down below. Now I'm getting some really interesting intuitive messages and your reading itself seems quite interesting. I'd say the main message is is be careful with communication at this time you are ruled by mercury who is or the planet mercury mercury was the god of communication so you should be pretty good at this game it's funny that i'm saying game already you've got crown games here so it's um You've got the message watch your words be careful what you're saying to other people but be careful with the information that's given to you as well like weigh it carefully and you don't have to say everything you know is a big message that's coming through here because you've got the owl three times um so i'm going to jump into the intuitive messages they may come through a little bit scary but it's fine okay just it's absolutely fine like let me explain um okay so uh the first thing that i saw for you was like a it was a golden compass so i don't know if some of you really like the books or the tv show the golden compass um his dark materials uh philip pullman uh but i was seeing um it looked like a compass it was flat but it it could have been the inside of a pocket watch as well which is interesting because you actually do have a little pocket watch somewhere on this card if i just kind of yeah she's got a little pocket watch there by her side so it it kind of looked like a golden like the inner workings of a clock so lots and lots of cogs just a lot of movement in there as well like if I was to try and actively visualize what I was seeing and the co complexity of it I wouldn't be able to pull that image in through my own imagination so it was something that was given to me um, a very detailed image that was much much more elaborate than anything that I could actively try to imagine um, and so then this ball this gold uh, this it was like a opening a watch right or a compass so this really intricate um thing with lots of dials inside it suddenly became an orb so a full round um orb um and i just knew inside it was like i could see through it i could visualize all these different cogs turning around inside this thing so it was fascinating to me um it kind of had the energy of like a ticking time bomb or a grenade now i'm not saying that's what it was but it feels like you are this is a representation of you so i was also given um a ballerina on a music box so when you open a music box the ballerina goes round and round and round which is interesting because you had the marionetta song in your last reading this whole thing about puppeting or being puppeted um and it's like um getting increasingly wound up is the way it's coming through so again with this um like uh this analogy of like a, you know you being this ticking time bomb or something I'm sorry if you can hear i'm a bit sniffly today um this um like as, being asked to perform in some sort of way but um getting increasingly frustrated or aggravated or angry about this uh, it's like you have something that you need to say is the way it's coming through it's like you know something and you could really kind of almost like drop a bomb in the situation where you know a truth bomb a truth bomb where you say something and it's going to have kind of like a, a shock a ripple effect so I want to say don't do it uh, Gemini especially if it's coming from a moment of anger or a moment of um, especially if this is something to do with an ex or somebody who has left you, um, then please don't um, try and it's like try and sabotage them with some kind of truth that you want to speak because it's only going to backfire on you in the long run. OK, it's low vibrational um, behavior. It's not going to work out well, uh, it, you know, but again, Gemini, you like the chaos. So who am I to tell you what to do? I'm telling you the messages that are coming through and what's coming through in the cards. Um, be wary if you've got a Gemini X and they've got information on you. Uh, they could be feeling particularly vengeful. It's not very nice. Um, I'm not going to say that any of you are going to do that as well. Gemini, it's important to understand that, you know, we... And the thing is about this reading, I see you gaining a sense of perspective and gaining a sense of patience um, and kind of playing the long game a little bit with this where um, you're recognising that if you say something off the cuff, if you say something instinctively, it is going to backfire. It's not the best thing to do. So you are a very intelligent sign and I can see that you are um, almost enjoying knowing something, enjoying having the power of um, 
having some sort of truth that you're keeping to yourself for this time. So, um, like I say, sometimes Gemini is like, haha, chaos, yay. Uh, and sometimes it's you're a little bit more complex than that because this gold thing that I see was very, very complex. Uh, I'm kind of um, almost like in a Scorpio. I'm getting a bit of Scorpio, like a Scorpio kind of way of... Um, I'm going to keep this to my myself and kind of see how this plays out. Um, okay. Uh, ballerinas could also apply to the last reading that I did with um, Aries Taurus because they had like um, watching a ballet, watching an opera. Um, and then fascin fascinatingly to me, the first card that came out for you is this a lady doing this kind of like tightrope ballet thing. So really interesting how that has kind of spilled over into your reading. Um, I This is the second reading that I've done for you. I have pulled two sets of cards um, because I want to make sure when I get the message that I'm understanding it clearly enough to be able to communicate it to you effectively. Um, and the first set of cards, I didn't fully understand what they were trying to say. So this is the second set of cards. In the first set, there was an owl card, so a specific owl card. Um, and then you actually have three owls in this reading. Now, uh, last night when I was kind of pondering on this, because I kind of pull the cards and I sit with them, um, I was really getting drawn to the, the owl as a symbol of the goddess Athena um, and how this does symbolise wisdom. Literally, the last card is wisdom here with this owl. Um, the kind of idea of a clockwork owl is not from classical culture, but there was a movie. Uh, it's one of these kind of, I don't know if they were set in like the 60s or something. These um, very famous kind of movies of uh, like the heroes and the kind of exploits. And one of them did have like a little mechanical golden owl. So that could be symbolic to somebody or uh, meaningful to somebody. Uh, I don't think that's for everybody, but I'm going to throw it out there. This owl, um, and again, there seems to be something about clockwork or knowledge of intricacies knowledge of how things work um i've just watched the movie um the samaritan which came out in one of my readings without me right the, the samaritan i had no idea that this was out was not in my consciousness at all um i i said the word samaritan in somebody's reading and then i've been seeing sylvester stallone references rocky references everywhere um even in uh, the reading for aries and taurus i mentioned uh, a sylvester stallone movie called oscar so uh, fascinating to me that i was already channeling sylvester stallone and these kind of, I said the name, right? I channeled the name of the movie. Um, and I was just on um, on Prime, kind of watch, looking for something to watch and it was suggested to me and I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. Um, and um, I thought it was an old movie and I didn't realise it had come out that exact day. So it's fascinating to me how I can predict stuff and then it's like actually there, like as a thing. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I, I kind of wanted to share that story with you. Um, Oh, sorry, as well as uh, Swiss clocks. So again, clockwork and things. I don't know if somebody has one of those old fashioned clocks where um, they um, just thinking about Aries and Taurus's reading and the thing about like the nutcracker and stuff. You know how like um, the day and night and like the when when the clock chimes, like it does this little kind of, you know, the characters come out and kind of t do stuff, you know, like a little clockwork animated clock effort. Um, oh, also, um, there could be something about synchronising with solar time because I was just at work and um, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. I was kind of doing my work and feeling really tired. And they were giving me, I can't even say it's not because this is what I mean. They give me stuff that's more clever than I am. So it's like a circ circadian, circadian clock. So the circadian clock, which is like your body's natural rhythm, could be something meaningful to somebody. But it's this idea of like light and dark. Okay, um, so back to the owl. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I am trying to do this as succinctly as I can, but the messages come in in a higgledy-piggledy fashion. So the owl in your last reading, I clarified with a song, and the song was uh, Ricochet by Taylor Swift. And um, I asked for a song for you for this reading, tell me what I need to communicate in this reading, and they gave me Ricochet by Taylor Swift. I really wanted to read the, the lyrics of that song to you because... Um, it's a very powerful song. It does make me cry. Um, but I, I'm using my, my normal phone to record and my other one's um, recharging. So I can't actually pull the lyrics up for you right now. But um, the premise is um, 
if I'm dead to you, why are you at my wake? So it's uh, somebody who's in the afterlife speaking to somebody. So please do, uh, even if you want to pause right now and just look up the lyrics of that song, Ricochet by Taylor Swift. It seems to be really important for your reading. Um, so assuming, assuming you've done that and you're back with me, <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift actually again, so I was getting Taylor Swift. You've got another Taylor Swift song somewhere. Oh, it was coming through overnight. Um, I'm going to have to pause and try and remember the song. Hold on. Okay, so it's, um, I did something bad, but why does it feel so good? Um, the most fun I ever had. Um, so it's that song. So all the songs that come through will be in the descri description box down below for you, hopefully, if I remember. Uh, but there is some lines in that that said, um, that talk about honesty and talk about, um, like telling the truth and you also have the song honesty by billy joel so there's something here with the queen of air that's coming through about an honest advisor so i'll come back to that as well okay yeah let's run through i think that's it for my notes for now um i got a little bit more on the the compass and i'm just going to tell you now <laughs> i'm just going to tell you now um so um kind of last night i was given um some words and they're on my phone and i can't look them up it's so frustrating um i was given the word gyroscopic and then quickly followed by something quantum th quantum accelerator thrust so the word gyroscopic on its own and then quantum accelerator thrust so i had to like write them down and then google them so gyroscopic now if remembering that i channeled this compass with um like uh, cogs moving in all directions inside that's literally um a, what a gyroscope is so if you google gyroscope um it's like um it's like things that spin in all directions and the purpose of this fascinatingly to me i'm wondering if it's something to do with the the rocket artemis that nasa's are sending up to the moon um which is happening more or less an hour or so after I put this reading up, hopefully, I did, again, I don't, can't guarantee, guarantee timing, but I'm doing this of the morning that they're going to fire the rocket up. Um, so I was like, that's fascinating to me. I wonder if the rocket has a gyroscope in it because the purpose of it is to maintain balance uh, and maintain the equilibrium of something like a rocket. So again, fascinating to me because I didn't know any of this before I Googled it. Um, and then I'm being given words that are kind of beyond my knowledge, which is fascinating to me. Um, and then this idea of um, quantum accelerator thrust, I don't understand it. It could be rocket rocket science, which again, don't have a degree in rocket science, so I can't really tell you much about it other than what Google said. Could be symbolic, could be something, I don't know. But a quantum gyroscope or a gy gyroscopic accelerator, I think those are things they're like like actual literal things that you can google and look up and rocket scientists will probably know stuff about that people who do physics will know stuff about that so again maybe somebody is a physicist and you know what i'm talking about cool and then this card here the blade is actually looking to me like a rocket landing so last night i had a very vivid dream it was very exciting that i was uh traveling along in the back of like a minibus uh, and i was kind of looking out the window and i was watching this rocket going up and it got kind of got to a certain point in the sky and two rockets fired off it um and it was like um you know when they kind of let go of part of the rockets like we don't need the thrusters any anymore so they're jettisoning the thrusters so these two rockets came off it again i don't know if this is actually what's going to happen or anything to do how rockets work but in my dream this is what happened so I'm communicating it to you because it could be something um, and as soon as these uh, rockets jettisoned off the rocket itself the main rocket started to go really wibbly wobbly so again gyroscopic thing could be helpful I don't know NASA <laughs> employ me <laughs> science um, but yeah the rocket started to go really wobbly and I could see that they were trying to correct it uh, so they were kind of controlling it even though something had clearly gone a bit wrong uh, and they were bringing it down back down to earth so it got really close to me which was terrifying and it was coming in like it was coming in like this angle so it wasn't coming in like straight down like it was going to crash it was kind of like being guided in and it got to a certain point and it flipped like this really close to the ground flipped up into its upright position like it was if it was going to launch and then it had like four jets on the bottom with water in uh, a bit like if you fired a hose um, and they were kind of shooting out at an angle like this so um, it kind of um, 
like the they use the the jets to land the rocket basically to to stick like in a stable way to land the rocket in an upright position which i found fascinating so i woke up and i didn't realize but if you look at um Elon Musk and his kind of attempts at uh, returning a, a rocket to Earth, they can actually land like this. He, had, he did act, actually, his team successfully um, had a rocket land back in the upright position on this little uh, boat in, in the water. <laughs> so, um, like, again, I didn't know that. That's something that's come through intuitively. So I don't know if this is something that's going to happen. I don't know why it's telling me this. I have the need it could be significant as well, like... Um, almost like perfect conditions like you know eye of the storm almost like the perfect condition to launch the rocket so i don't know this could just be talking about the fucking rocket but gemini if we bring this back down to earth so what i'm seeing happening for you the five of uh, the five of swords is a card about conflict differences of opinion um people arguing uh, so it's it's to do with language because air is, all, is swords energy, swords is always logic and language. So it's differences of opinion, people arguing over the different opinions. But to me today, it's looking like information coming into you. Now, uh, there could be something about being a little bit in disguise or something like this. It's like you are the mothership or something like you are the big bird. Um, so um, again, some of you could be a ballet, ballet dancer. I don't know. Maybe you've been watching a ballet. Uh, maybe it's nothing to do with anything at all it could just be talking about really being very graceful and keeping your balance so it's like um it's because if you look here she's on a tightrope so i feel like there could be something that's like a very delicate situation for you especially with eye of the needle it's like the situation itself needs to be kept in balance or the situation itself um is like walking a tightrope and so there's these other people coming in with differences of opinion or pieces of information or pieces of news who are coming in to kind of like land on your situation land in your balance um, and to give you information um now the way this is coming through is this is all can you see how they're all white it's like even the big person is like a dove so it's like this situation is in balance but it could easily fall out of balance if you listen to the wrong advice or if you entertain gossip because this parrot spirit is coming in next and you can see that the parrot spirit is very very different than the kind of doves that are a symbol of peace right and who are engaged in this fine balancing act the parrot spirit seems to be coming in like a chatterbox which again this could be you going into somebody else's space but flip it and reverse it as needs be um or it's somebody who is a gossip but they're trying to disguise themselves as part of this peaceful group um so it's like this is because it says watch your words um so be careful about don't spread rumors don't spread false information um if you have a piece of information check its valid validity this is kind of going back to aries and taurus's reading i want to say or it could be the reading before i have taken that reading down by the way now um where there was a message coming through about um daedalus and daedalus's statues and how um socrates said um there, there's a difference between true opinions and knowledge. True opinions are just the what the majority agree on. So you may have a true opinion because the example that he gives is, um, say you wanted to go to a certain place, you could ask somebody who's been there before to give you a map um, and to give you directions. And this is a true opinion. This person who has expertise has given you the information of how to get to this place. But somebody else could come along who's also been to that place and who's also an expert and they could draw a different map. The only way for you to truly know uh, what opinion is true is for you to actually go and walk that route yourself and go to that place and draw your own map and then either of these people could come back to you and say this is how you get there and you could say no I know from experience that this is the truth so there's a difference between um um, received information from a secondhand source and actually validating it yourself so be very careful about the information you receive and uh, whether it is true or not and the person giving you this information could really believe it to be true they could be speaking their truth to you but remember that everybody experiences things through, through their own lens so what could be true to the to them somebody else could have a different version of the truth uh, memory is a very very uh, shaky thing it could be something about a court situation uh, coming through because you did have objection by Shakira as well although I'm not seeing the justice card so it could just be um, it kind of made me think of um, like a, a marriage as well objection you know if does anyone here have anything to say so just be really careful if you're in any kind of situation where um, you know 
you are being given some information. It's like you have to weigh it carefully because the situation is in a delicate balance. Um, so don't spread rumors yourself if you haven't checked the validity um, and uh, don't entertain gossip because it's going to be uh, upsetting to your, uh, your situation. Um, there's also something about... Um, what's the song? Um, it's a Wolf Alice song and it's like... Um, if we don't fight, we'll both win. So um, don't argue amongst yourself, something like that. Um, so again, it, you have this kind of feeling of being this character. I'm kind of seeing the Queen of Air as you. So sat kind of in your study or sat in your room, kind of doing your work, sat in your office doing your work. It's like um, the owls and these creatures are kind of like bringing trinkets to you or bringing pieces of information to you is the way it's coming through. And it's like you're busy doing your work as this kind of magician-like character. You are the magician in the tarot normally. So you're kind of... Um, Again, it's like if you were repairing a clock, right? If you were repairing a watch. Oh, well, that's why I mentioned Sam Samaritan. You like repair stuff. Um, if you were repairing something, you know, you'd need very, very fine tools to do it. You'd need, um, you know, tiny tools. <laughs> um, it'd be, you know, maybe you'd need a mag magnifying glass. You'd, you'd have to really focus on the tiny, tiny, like, little pieces of whatever you're building. You know, um, a more modern day um, example could be computer chips. You know, if you were make putting a computer chip together, you know it could be very fine work uh, maybe you are a seamstress or something as well it's like whatever you're doing um you do have to focus it is a uh, very fine detailed work that you're doing um so um there's uh, this information queen into you the ace of cups is an emotional offer um, it talks to me about unconditional love and it talks to me about um, kind of like accepting all kind of thing. Um, and a pearl, obviously, it symbols, symbolizes a pearl of wisdom. So I do feel like you're being brought some kind of lots of pieces of information. Again, it's like information from lots of different places, lots of different sources all coming through to you. Um, but you could have people who are um, not reliable and then other people who are... Um, perhaps more reliable or perhaps, uh, you know, speaking from the heart. Uh, so, you know, if they speak from the heart, that is their truth. Uh, it could be something like that. Um, but it's also talking to me about seeing the detail of the situation because the Ace of Water sometimes talks to me about uh, boiling things down at more the page of water, actually. But the Ace of Water can be um, purity, like uh, the elemental... Um, base of whatever this is so it's like really seeing the um seeing something for what it is seeing some seeing the truth of something is kind of what's coming through with that so then the queen of air is really coming through this message of um you know she's receiving all this information and she has to filter through it right she has to see the truth of each piece of information and really put each piece of information in its context so why would this not only this person saying this to me but why is this person saying this to me what's their motivation um you know what are their sources so almost like a um a lawyer you know perhaps like a police officer comes to them with like we found out this information um we got this from one of our our informants well how reliable is that informant why would they be saying something like that could it be that there's other kind of things at play that's making them say that you know it's like not taking things at face value um now the queen of air as well i love the queen of air it's libra energy i'm a libra with a gemini moon so it can relate you could easily also be this energy uh it's somebody who really knows their truth um they speak carefully it's again eye of the needle is almost and the blade is like um speak clearly with authority on what you know to be a fact and if you have some information that you would like to communicate but you don't know how valid it is make sure you give the person that you're giving that information to the context that that information may not be reliable right so it's like if you are passing on unreliable unreli unreliable information it's like just so you know i've heard this however it is a rumor i have not validated if this is true or not it seems to be be very careful with like the truth and knowledge and wisdom is the message um and again this idea of like billy joel and honesty um it's like honesty is what I need from you. So the Queen of Air always is an advisor to me. She's like the royal advisor, if you like. So um, she's um, she can be quite brutal. She can be quite um, again. The blade is 
it carries this message of um the the blade can be a weapon and it can be a tool right like a pen right the pen is mightier than the sword it's like um the truth can be used to injure and the truth can be used to um like for the greater good so be very very care careful with any information that you have uh because um like you don't want to use it as a weapon so again going back to that almost scorpio like uh need for revenge like i have this truth i have this information i have this news i'm going to use it to hurt you know that information could turn out to not be true and you would hurt yourself in doing so so it's like if you have information sit on it a while check the validity think it over um just be very careful because with the right use of power um it seems to be a message about um okay it's almost like off with her head um so it's almost like um you do, say for example, if this is like the court of Henry VIII, uh, you wouldn't want to be one of his advisors who passes over bad information because, um, you know, you may lose your job if you're seen to be, if your position is somebody who gives important, reliable information, you know, and somebody's going to make decisions on that and you give them false information or wrong information um, and you know, a decision is made that kind of backfires, you know, you, you know, the king is not going to take accountability for that. The king is going to say, this was given to me by this advisor. This advisor probably needs to not have that job anymore. So um, just be very, very careful with this power, right? It's like knowledge is power. Um, what's also really interesting to me is I had a dream where, uh, not a dream, I had a, I was a vision, a vision during meditation where I was sat on the edge of this beach uh, and suddenly there was this, all this golden light. It was like golden, gold dust in the air. And I kind of had my hands out and the gold dust started to stick to my hands. So I did talk about this in one of my other readings about this kind of, again, talking about like the statues and things. It's like, um, it just, it kind of was like that. It's like suddenly I was like covered in, maybe it's gold finger, right? Everything this person touches turns to gold. Um, I'm getting gold through very, very strongly. Uh, maybe somebody has gold bullion. Uh, or something like this um gold keeps coming through again you have the golden compass so it's like um maybe you act as an advisor to somebody maybe you are the golden compass maybe you uh direct this person uh because you give very very good advice perhaps anything that you're involved in has this kind of golden touch to it where um you know your advice can turn something into gold uh so there could be something like that happening as well again especially if the work that you do is very very um intricate or very fine or very detailed you may just have an eye for detail you may be very good at um uh, when information comes in you can pick it apart very well you know you don't just take the headline news you read the information you read the information from multiple sources you look at how uh, it's very kind of academic so maybe again you could work in academia um it's it's like um you don't just take something at face value uh, oh socrates said this therefore it is true it's like socrates is said to have said this well socrates didn't write anything down so uh, this was actually uh, is it plato that kind of wrote about i get them all mixed up <laughs> um so one of the philosophers, the was it Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, or Aristotle, Socrates, Plato? I don't know. I my specialism was classics. It wasn't necessarily philosophy, but I do remember covering it. Um, so there was like uh, the teacher of the teacher, right? Uh, one of them. I do believe it was Socrates because it didn't write anything down because it ties into this concept of uh, true opinions being something that can shift, like the statues of Daedalus, uh, and uh, true knowledge being something that you've experienced yourself. Um, so again, this is um, true opinion. You know, my knowledge of classics comes from uh, other people who have have worked in academia and passed on this knowledge to me i have not seen the statues of daedalus moving myself i was not there listening to socrates tell me this information from his own mouth so this awareness that information comes to us through multiple sources through multiple lenses seems to be important um and how uh, you can put things into context. So uh, Socrates is said to have said this. We know this because Plato uh, kind of told us all the teachings of Socrates. He was his student. Uh, if I got that the right way around again, I don't want to spread false information. Go and Google it. I can't Google it at the moment because I'm on my phone recording. Um, but um, and then it's like and then this was scribed by this person and this was handed down to this person. This was from this temple wall. So what we get taught is, for example, um, if we look at um, um, something that um, uh, Rora, what's his name? I want to say Sophocles, but I don't think it's Sophocles. 
who wrote the 12 Caesars? Suetonius. If you look at Suetonius's information about uh, Julius Caesar, for example, we get a lot of our stories about Julius Caesar from Suetonius. Suetonius was a historian. He did have access to all the kind of royal files uh, and he spoke to a lot of people who um, had a lot of knowledge. So he was basing his work on true opinions, uh, but he wasn't there. He was actually writing about 200, 250 years after Julius Caesar was alive. He was not a... Um, an associate he didn't know the man himself um, so to take something like the piece of work from Suetonius uh, and to take that as factual information about Julius Caesar Suetonius was writing in a very different time under a different emperor under a different regime uh, they had different interests in promoting different uh, values so uh, we have to be very very careful when we're given information because um, if a different piece of work comes to life, if a different piece of material comes to life, perhaps um, something that was, perhaps something by Augustus Caesar himself, who was the adoptive son of Julius Caesar, uh, for example, the res geste, um, that is much more of an equivalent uh, of somebody who was alive at the same time, obviously also had their own um, things that they were promoting, the reasons for saying what they do. So the reason why I'm talking about all this, again, doesn't have to necessarily mean anything, is that we have to be careful with the information that we have. Unless we have actually been there and witnessed it ourselves, we cannot take it as 100% um, valid, true opinion. It has to be. Uh, the idea of a true opinion is ultimately false. Um, there is only knowledge um, and uh, experience that we have ourselves. Anything else can be brought into question. Okay, so there's something going on with these two cards where uh, water talks about overwhelming emotions. Um, again, if you're dealing with something uh, where you there's emotions involved, um, just be very, very careful. Again, if somebody perhaps because your your song was Ricochet by Taylor Swift. Oh, Taylor Swift's releasing an album as well, by the way. I forgot to mention that. So I've got two two t Taylor Swift songs for you. Just so happens I logged on to Twitter this morning and she's announced she's releasing a new album. So anything that comes through in a reading always turns out to be something that's accurate and true and actually going on. Um, so, um, yeah, if you're dealing with... Um, I mean, it, it could be, so this was kind of looking to me a little bit like eye surgery. So somebody could be having laser eye surgery. Somebody could be having, uh, you know, maybe even like, I don't know, like uh, a, uh, like a beauty treatment, like an eye lift or something. I don't know. Um, it's, if that's for you, take it. If it's not, leave it. Um, and then this was kind of looking to me like, um, because I'm actually going to the opticians this week. This was looking to me like uh, when you put on the, the lens and you look through at the chart and you see what's in focus and what's not in focus. So you actually have a song about focus, I believe. Uh, Blurry by Puddle of Mud. So it could just be an eye test. Um, but... Um, and how important it is if you are having an eye test that, you know, you you speak the truth to your optician. If you say, yeah, yeah, I can see everything perfectly fine and you can't, they're going to give you the wrong prescription. So uh, just be honest, you know, sometimes they do that thing where they're like, which lens looks better, this one or this one? And they put the same lens in um, and they, if you go, oh, the first one looks better, you know, the optician knows that they can't quite trust what you're saying. They have to test a little bit longer. So if you say they look it's more or less the same, I can't tell the difference, you know, the, the, the optician kind of can rely on your opinion a bit more so again just the importance of being truthful so it's also looking to me about yeah so if there's um it's like if truth is coming to you if uh if you are receiving information, uh, look at the emotions involved is somebody speaking a truth because they're overwhelmed are they you know are they seeing the situation clearly or are, is there too much em emotion involved that's clouding their judgment could be something like that Sorry about the alarm if you can hear that in the background. Um, this is also looking to me like peeking through a keyhole. So can you see there's a little tiny keyhole here? Um, and then this look kind of looks like peeking through the keyhole. So it's like um, judging a situation because you've seen a tiny fragment. So for example, if you, was, if you were um, privy to perhaps you... <sighs> It could be so many situations like I'm not saying that anyone's actively spying uh, I mean possibly but say you uh, peek through a keyhole and you saw people arguing you might think that they always argue but you might have just caught them 
like in a you know in an emotional moment or uh, it's like if you were on the phone to somebody or somebody pocket dialed you and you just got 10 seconds of an, a conversation it's like you've only got a tiny fragment of the whole picture it's kind of making me think of um, how I was talking about catchphrase it could have been in Aquarius's reading this this game show called catchphrase where um they, you get like a, a big picture and the pieces of the picture get revealed one at a time. It's like all the information t tends to be in one tiny corner of the screen. So it's like you may think that you have the full information about the full picture, but you could only have a fragment if you've, if this is something you've overheard or if something's come to you, uh, perhaps because you've, you've witnessed something out of context perhaps or you've witnessed because it's coming through with the witness as well right it's like uh having a peek into somebody's window perhaps and seeing a glimpse of their life and witnessing something because you can see as well there's even this eye in the background here perhaps for some of you it is um Perhaps for, for some of you it is astral viewing or perhaps some of you do scrying like with a crystal ball. It's like you've seen a particular scene or you've seen a particular glimpse of something but you have to bring this down to earth. You have to be really careful with whatever you've witnessed because um, again if you speak a truth on behalf of somebody else perhaps perhaps you're concerned about somebody else in their relationship uh, so you're saying I saw this person uh, being really mean to this person um, you know it could be taken out of context so just be very very careful because you know uh, if you say something it can actually do a lot of damage especially if it gets on social media and it starts to you know the ball starts rolling and things like that it can really uh, if you take something out of context it can really do a lot of damage if you know people jump on a bandwagon so I really feel like you need to get more context on that an example would be um, um, I um, I put a, a top that has Greg's on it. Greg's is a uh, a, a pastry shop in the UK. Uh, it's um, it's kind of uh, it's become a bit of a meme. Uh, if I live in the north of England, so Greg's is kind of like this institution of you know uh, cheap food, especially during winter because you know you could be really hungry, you could need lunch, and it could be really cold. And if you get a couple of Greg's pasties, you know you can stick one in your pocket; it'll keep your hand warm. Eat the other one, warms you up. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it's not particularly healthy, but um, you know it's it's a comfort. Um, you know and. So people love Greg's in the north um, and uh, the shops are always busy and all this kind of stuff. So um, I saw this top with Greg's on it. It's like a the Wicked Me Primark and I was like, ha that's funny. I'm going to wear it ironically. Um, and I was like, do you know what? I'm pretending I'm wearing it ironically, but I actually love it. <laughs> and uh, somebody in really good nature. So thank you if you do happen to watch this. Somebody I know on social media said to me, oh, there's this thing going around on TikTok where people are pulling people over and saying, oh, hey, did you know that the heir to Greg's is been in this legal situation for doing something horrible um you know and it's like uh, there's this whole movement to boycott the company uh, on tiktok but of course tiktok is very very short pieces of information um so and it's um you know designed to catch your attention it's designed to provoke you it's designed to engage you so i was like when this person said this to me i was like thank you so much for letting me know obviously i don't want to get accidentally wrapped up in some sort of meme i'm so sorry about that alarm guys i can't really stop um and, uh, you know, it's good to have that information. So I really did value that person, you know, letting me know that. Um, but I looked into it. So I got home and I looked into it more. Um, and again, I looked into it with more detail than you could look into it, like a lawyer would, right? Uh, than you could possibly get from TikTok. And, um, you know, in 2017, uh, Greg's put out a statement saying that this person hadn't had anything, any active involvement whatsoever to do with the company uh, for several years. So we're talking probably circa 2010 or something, right? They've not had any active involvement with the company. The company is a PLC, which is a public licensed company, which means it's not actually owned by an individual, it's shareholders. So yes, you can have a majority shareholder, but you can't inherit the company because that's not how it works. You can't be the heir to Greg's if it's a PLC. You can be the heir to some of the shares um, however I found out that his wife um, had I believe if this is correct had sold a number of their shares so I don't know if he has any involvement whatsoever with the company and even if he was a shareholder he is no way responsible for the company the company is independent from him he just ha would happen to own some shares 
Um, and if you wanted to look at every single company in existence and go through every single shareholder of every single company and weed out anybody who had any kind of criminal record or shady behavior, you would be boycotting most companies because, yeah, you can't really decide who does and doesn't buy your shares. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of different factors, right? And so the more I looked into it, the more this idea of boycott Greg's didn't hold up. So then I started to say, well, Greg's employs 23,000 people and these are people like me. These are um, you know, working class people with families, with children who don't earn a lot of money, probably most of them working for minimum wage. Uh, and, you know, the, the company itself that has no active involvement with this individual that people are angry with um, is actually doing a lot of good because it's employing 23,000 people. Those 23,000 people are giving food, uh, low income food, you know, uh, cheap food food that keeps you warm to the people of the north who historically you know don't have high incomes um so there's a much more when i weighed it up when i put it into its context of the bigger picture with this guy basically having no active involvement with the company um when i kind of put things into context with that wider perspective i was like look there's no point boycotting the company and then i was saying well who would benefit from boycotting the company certainly not the people of uh, the north who benefit from the company remaining in business you know it's employing 23,000 people and feeding people um you know, who would benefit? Probably other companies who sell food for much more expensive, you know, much more expensive food and maybe employ less people because they're running a company for, for profit or, you know what I mean? I mean, it's a, a company. So, of course, everybody runs a company for profit. You know, Greg's isn't a charity. But, um, you know, who would benefit from that? And then I thought about how the Conservative Party wanted to put taxes on pastry goods. Uh, and David Cameron had this whole thing about, like, Greg's and, uh, you know, the posh people people back down south here you know who don't benefit from the company uh you know would benefit from greg's closing down because maybe we'd get some of these like you know corporate companies coming i don't know so uh, the more i started to ask questions about it the more this um kind of knee-jerk reaction of tiktok um this headline uh, didn't make sense anymore. Um, so just there could be something about that you know before you before you speak be, you know, really investigate what you're speaking on. Um, so, um, and again, this, like me going into detail, like looking up who are the shareholders of Greg's, you know, it's very Queen of Swords energy. It's like, get your facts straight. Um, so again, be careful with the blade, be careful with your words, be careful with what you say, because uh, what you say has an effect. The earth, get grounded. Um, make sure anything you do say is really, really rooted in... Um, you know, when you speak from a place of true knowledge, not true opinion, this is deeply rooted. This is not something that can be shaken. If you speak from the heart, if you stand in your in your truth, in your integrity, and you speak words that you know to be true to you and you can back up because you've done that research, you it's harder to shift that opinion. You know, you're not like the statues of Daedalus wandering around. Your your knowledge is screwed down. Um and then wisdom here with the owl spirit and wisdom. This always talks to me about um if you're puzzling over something, take a break from it, step back, and the answers will come to you. Um, so there's more information coming in, there's more wisdom, there's more knowledge coming in. So again, uh, don't speak right now, rest on it, think on it, and um, yeah, let the information come to you. You don't, even just because you have information, you don't have to actively act on every single piece of information you have. Um, you've also got acceptance here, which again looks like watching the rocket, right? <laughs> on the starry night. You also have inner child. The fairies of playfulness remind you to take time to in embrace your inner child. Playing keeps us young at heart. Do something silly and fun, but say, stay safe. So it sounds like just go and distract yourself. Just do something different if you feel like you have a piece of information because there's more information coming that will give you more context. The fairy of time wants you to experience every moment fully and to make the most of your precious time. Be mindful not to waste the time of others either. Um, I've, got, I've only got a couple of minutes left. I'm just going to stop and restart because there's three cards that I want to read um, and I don't have time right now on this phone. So I'm just going to stop and restart and hopefully that's going to give me a bit more time. <laughs> Talking about not wasting your precious time, right? Hold on. Okay, five minutes I've got now. So I am really sorry about that alarm. Again, nothing I can do about it. Um, so I'm sorry if it's bothering you. Nine of Pentacles, a very independent energy, Capricorn energy. You've got Capricorn here as well. Anything with like antlers tends to remind me of Capricorn. Uh, can also be talking about crown chakra. So maybe you receive messages as I do through the crown chakra. 
Uh, so crown games, leadership, responsibility, accountability, right use of power. There is a game of power played by all people, whether they're conscious of it or not. It concerns who has it and who doesn't, how to get more of it and how not to lose that which you have, how to wield it wisely and not get drunk with it and cause harm. These are matters you need to ponder now that you find yourself in the crown game too. So I was getting something about... Um, are you really playing the same game if you both have different ideas of what it takes to win? What does winning the game look like to you? It could be very different from somebody else. So this idea of like we don't have to fight and we can both win. Um, if you're in conflict with somebody else, maybe work out what your goals are. So what do you want from this and what do they want from this? Could there be a way to compromise where you both get what you want? Because perhaps you're both vying for something and you think you're vying for the same thing. But if you haven't had a conversation about it... Um, you know, there could be a way that satisfies you both is the way that's coming through. Um, you could be playing different games parallel to each other that actually have different rules. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, these are matters you need to ponder now that you find yourself in the crown game, too. You want to be on top, the best, the most effective, the most beloved. You may discover that your deep desire to help others is disguising the underpinnings of this complex game. Power and all it entails can be both dangerous and productive, destructive and redemptive, so similar message to the blade. Uh, which will it be for you? Can you forgive without condoning and keep your dignity when challenged? Now, again, this is next to the Ace of Water, which is unconditional love. That's forgiveness without condoning, right? Uh, don't judge others by the same rules that you judge yourself. People have, play the game with different rule books. Um, can you forgive without condoning and keep your dignity when challenged? Will you be accountable, amenable to change or making amends? Can you let go of your need to rescue others? Lead with humility while letting others discover their own way home. Now you're learning that empowerment comes with a price and a sacrifice for sovereignty. It is time to pick your battles. Use strategy and temper your reactions. The thing about the Queen of Air, she knows she's very open, she's very honest, she will give um, she will give you her opinion, but she also knows that there's a time and a place to speak. She's uh, temperate. She's um, measured. Um, she's not like the Knight of Swords who goes in with the sword swinging. She, um, you know, she's a bit, little bit more moderate with her truth. Uh, you know, she's learned a few lessons about how to exactly to wield that sword. So the king of air, um, the king of swords is more likely to be more strategic. They're more likely to keep things to themselves. So if you're normally quite open at, with your truth, it could be just saying with the owl, the owl has big eyes. They know a lot, but they have a little beak. So they don't necessarily speak on it. It could just be a little warning for somebody. Um, Uh, use strategy and temper your reactions. Again, don't speak in anger. If you feel angry, take a step back from the situation. You have the power to make a beautiful difference on behalf of others. Can you see power as a currency that you must spend judiciously? True power is steward. Stu thank God that alarm stopped. True, true power is stewarded wisely, for it is given from the divine, not from the ego. In all your relations, the greatest beauty is when power is shared. If you are in a higher position, it's even more important to be kind and respectful. Ask for guidance. It will come when you choose compassion over your own goals and desires. When you stop caring about who wears the crown, true success and influence appear for you. The Queen of Air is the advisor. She has no interest in, be in wearing the crown herself. She has no... Um, she recognises her power lies in being an advisor. She recognises her own strengths. She knows her own position. She has no wish to be the king. Um, you know, she ha has no wish to be in the seat of power. Uh, she knows where her strengths lie. Um, you know, she's not the decision maker. She's the information giver. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, because, just because one person wants to be king doesn't mean that everybody does. Um, so, Queen of Pentacles. Again, I'm so curious because I was saying this is Capricorn energy uh, with the... Um, with the because they get deer and antler energy a lot uh, and then i've picked out accidentally actually both of those are capricorn so you could have capricorn placements the witness the witness observes without engaging in any action by cultivating inner stillness we are able to assess any situation from a higher perspective and make better decisions Oh my goodness, I'm going to run out of time. Um, when we can be present for somebody else's difficulties with stillness, we are able to truly hear them and give better advice. Sometimes, so again, 
listen you can give better advice with when you witness with stillness sometimes we can be so still that we are a mirror for the other then through our presence we receive our own answers the witness has been by your side all along and is now ready to, be, to become your ally you thought you were the doer but today you discover that things will happen when you get out of the way witness creation unfold oh now i've got six minutes my phone's so janky um you thought you were the doer, but today you discover things happen when you get out of the way. Witness creation unfolding before you. Change reality by finding stillness and letting your true intent reveal itself. So again, remember, she's taking a break here and more wisdom is coming to her. The wis the, um, acknowledge your preconceptions, ideas and feelings about the situation you are in, but resist the urge to change any of it. Do not fall back into your controlling patterns. Instead, take a few breaths and connect with the joy of not having to perform. Hold space for the world to keep spinning on its own. So you don't always have to, again, you do, just because you know something, it doesn't mean that you have to run in, kind of like the Knight of Swords with the sword flying to save the day. You know, um, you can know something and wait for more information to come through, right? You can... Um, you can ask for more information. You don't always have to put all your cards on the table. Um, Owl Spirit Wisdom, a uh, page of wands. Uh, so this could be um, fire energy, particularly Aries. Um, it is impulsive. So again, just be careful of like, if you get angry in any sort of way, make sure you remember to stay temperate. You could also get very excited. Um, page of wands is a very excited energy, but they've got a lot of learning to do. Um, okay, so the the last card in your reading, owl, owls could be very significant. Watch out for owls. If you see owls, it could be telling you something. So, for example, just today on Instagram, um, there was, um, I, do, I can't tell you the account. I think it was like a Japanese account. Um, and it was one of these that just pops up in your feed. But it was a white owl and it was having a bath and it was trying to cool itself off. So, again, you know, if something happens and you get feel provoked in some sort of way or overexcited, take a step back, you know, maybe have a cold shower, maybe just have a glass of cold water, cool down, cool yourself off, go for a quick walk, whatever you need to do, take a break, step back um, and come back with more wisdom and clarity. Turn that knowledge into wisdom. There's a difference between uh, information and the wisdom to know what to do with that information. Um, and it was too, it was too ballet music as well, <laughs> which was the funniest thing to me, that the Instagram owl. Uh, the sun has set and you feel a remarkable transformation occurring. Your body shapeshifts into an owl. You stretch out your huge wings and silently stop. So I'm not saying you're going to become an owl, but maybe this is like a meditation thing you want to do. You stretch out your huge wings and silently stop, soar to the top of the tallest pine tree and look over the moonlit forest. Your ability to see the smallest detail, even in darkness, your ability to see the smallest detail, even in darkness. So again, darkness could be an information vacuum. You know, you don't ha have the information, you don't have the truth, and yet you can see the details of the situation. Um, your sight expands and you see the luminous light bodies of spirits in, in the forest. They signal to you with love and compassion. Abounding insight, profound majesty and grace are all available to you now, simply by pulling your awareness inwards. So maybe do some meditation. You had this at the end of your last reading, I remember, because you had the thing about like going to the forest in meditation and meet the wolf. Now you're being asked to be an owl in that forest. Where does that take you? What information comes to you when you do that work? Um, ancient wisdom is emerging. You know the truth. Trust your intuition and your perceptions right now. You are a truth seeker and a truth sharer. The excellent sight of an owl in the darkness corresponds with your ability to perceive the reality of a situation, even in the murkiest of conditions, right, puddle of mud. Um, when this card choos chooses you, you are at the advent of a time of profound illumination and transformation. The owl sits on the shoulder of Athena and Merlin. Merlin is the magician. You are the magician card in the tarot. Um, Athena, I would say, is Libra energy. And again, you could have Libra in your chart. Uh, revealing sacred truths. In some native cultures, the owl is called the night eagle. Uh, the owl is also representative of high priestess energy, which would be Scorpio. So however, you know, symbolism works in different ways for different people. However, it relates to you, right? Um, in some native cultures, the owl is called the night eagle, for it has the majesty of the eagle, but works silently in the darkness of night. The card can also mean that it's time to embrace your dark side as well as your light. But in doing so, you will be in balance. 
The Spirit of the Owl says, trust in your ability to see the deepest truth in a situation and in people. Wisdom is growing, oh my God, the alarm's back. Wisdom is growing within you in mysterious ways, beyond your awareness. This is a good time to sign up for inspirational courses. Uh, messengers from spirits are all around you. Look for them and trust what you feel. If you are signing up to a course, make sure it's something that you're excited about, that you're passionate about, that you're really genuinely interested in. Don't just sign up for it for something to do because that's, um, that's not the message there. Um, so Gemini's, um, I think I had one last thing. Let me just pause and have a sip of coffee and I'll be back. Hold on. Okay, so the last thing quickly. Um, I was getting something through about, um, now again, there could be a, a false advisor or an advisor that gives the impression of being wise, but actually is not the best advisor. Now you've got the owl card here. Owls are not, um, they're not actually known for the intelligence. Queen of air, I normally associate with crow energy now crows are a very spiritual bird and a very truthful advisor i work a lot with the crows in the local area which sounds funny i know but it's true so um there's a story in uh, metamorphosis if you read of it um where uh, an owl is talking to a crow and athena you know the crow saying i was supposed to be the advisor to athena um so um there could be something there about being careful about the advisor you choose. If you are in a position of authority and you need advice, um, you know, you could have people who seem like they know everything, uh, but who perhaps do not have, uh, perhaps they have true opinions and not genuine knowledge. Um, so just be careful about people who, because owls can puff up as well, you know, they can um, give this air of importance, but actually they're not as intelligent as a crow would be. So there's a message in that for you as well. And uh, just to kind of say um, this queen of pentacles, because I do feel like this is coming through Capricorn energy, this kind of leadership energy. Um, she's listening to a crow here. The crow kind of, kind of looks like a cat to me as well. Um, so there could be a message there around just be careful about, um, uh, information coming to you, entertaining gossip, um, and just really listen to what people are saying. Because if someone's saying to you, um, I have this information, however, I don't know if it's from a reliable source, listen to that. Don't take the information at face value. Listen to the context of the, how that information is being given to you. All right. I hope that was really, really helpful. Good luck, whatever you're doing. 